there's a battlefield, you know, which has a limit, and they fight within that battlefield, and that's all. Uh, so um, these are the great arts of chivalry, which have, of course, been lost in Kali Yuga. Anyway, while dying, the grandfather Bhishma prayed to Krishna and described him as the sun which eradicated darkness. The kings imprisoned by Magadendra were put into dark cells. But when Krishna appeared there, the darkness immediately disappeared just as if the sun had risen. In other words, although Magadendra was able to imprison so many kings, upon the appearance of Krishna they were all released. Krishna released the kings out of his sincere compassion for them. Krishna's compassion was also exhibited when Grandfather Bhishma was lying on the bed of arrows which had been shot through his body. While lying in this position, Bhishma was very anxious to see Krishna, and thus Krishna appeared there. Upon seeing the pitiable condition of Bhishma, Krishna began speaking with tears in his eyes. Not only he was shedding tears, but he also forgot himself in his compassion. Therefore, instead of offering obeisances to Krishna directly, devotees offer obeisances to his compassionate nature. Do you know how we do that? Hare Krishna. Yeah, Hare mm -hmm. is Radha. Mm -hmm. See? So we offer the first to his compassionate side, his feminine side. Actually, because Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, it is very difficult to approach Him. But the devotees, taking advantage of His compassionate nature, which is represented by Radharani, always pray to Radharani for Krishna's compassion. See, that's why we, we chant Hare Krishna, you know, and not Krishna Radha or something like that. Always Radha Krishna. See, we address Radha first, and by Her grace, we're able easily to approach Krishna. 33. Respectful. A person who shows adequate respect to a spiritual master, a brahmana, and an old person is to be understood as being respectful. When superior persons assembled before Krishna, Krishna first of all offered respect to his spiritual master, then to his father, and then to his elder brother Balaram. In this way, Lord Krishna, the lotus eyed was completely happy and pure at heart in all of his dealings. You see, people don't understand the way to be happy. The way, the way to be happy, even in human society, uh, not to speak of even spiritual life or anything like that, but, but simply in the, on the human level, is that we always give respect to superior persons. I mean, I had so many disagreements with my family. Practically, I disagreed with everything. <laughs> you know, meat eating and their, their whole worldview and everything like that. But I never disrespected them. I always treated them with respect. You know, even if I had a disagreement, I would try once or twice to, you know, discuss with them. And if they didn't want to discuss, then I would drop the subject because they were in a superior position from me. And so, you know, that was the right thing for me to do. Then later on, when it came time for me to go off and be independent, uh, then of course, I did whatever I wanted to do. But when I was a youngster, uh, I, never, I never argued with my parents. I never talked back to my parents. And I thought it was very, very distasteful uh, when I saw my young friends doing this. I thought it was very disrespectful. My aunt used to tell one story that one time we were Christmas shopping. And I was about, I don't know, four or five years old. Still not even in school. And there was one young kid who wanted a certain toy. And he was like rolling on the ground, beating fists, crying. And she said, I, I looked at him with such distaste. <laughs> like, you know. You know, because it, it was disgusting to me, you know. It was just like, why is he 
abasing himself over some stupid plastic toy. This is like nonsense. So when I see people, you know, whining and crying and, you know, trying to push their parents into doing this or that, you know, young people, I, I just say, well, they haven't been trained properly. You know, they're, they're, not, they're not properly respectful. You know? And the danger is that if we disrespect our elders and especially a spiritual master, that we could cause some offense which will become a big blockage to our spiritual life later on. See? So it's very, very good to have the habit of offering respect. I remember one time I got bored in the temple at, uh, in Vrindavan, the Iskand temple, and I decided to go to Radhakund. Radhakund is a very beautiful place in Vrindavan. So I went to Radhakund, and when I was there, there were all kinds of, you know, very simple, very pious local people like that. And most of my godbrothers, fellow American devotees, when they went there, they would like, you know, laugh and shout and run and jump in the kund and like that. I didn't do that. You know, I came there and I, I offered obeisances to the kund. I offered obeisances to all the Babaji's and the elders there, you know. And I treated everyone with respect and, you know, offered pranams to everyone, even the, the simple uh, cowherd men and, uh, you know, the, in, in Vrindavan there's a class of pilgrims who they circumambulate the whole Govardhan hill or the whole Vrindavan simply by paying obeisances. Uh, they have one stone. Yeah, yeah, they'll, they'll put the stone and then they'll pay obeisances to, to that location of that stone. And then they'll get up, they'll move the stone one step, and then they'll pay obeisances again. And this way they go around the whole Raja. And to go around the whole Raja takes months. Mm. Huh? And at the end of the day, at sundown, wherever they are, they put the rock, and then they go sleep under a tree. Maybe they beg a little chapatis or something, and rest under the near, nearby tree and chant. And then in the morning they start all over again. I mean, who could imagine such humility? So anyway, you don't know who is a great saintly person and who is a rascal and who is just ordinary or devotee or what. You can't tell. Sometimes the, the guys, you know, with the big tilak and the big, big, uh, you know, big thread and big beads and everything. You know, sometimes they wear these really big beads, you know. <laughs> you know, he may be a rascal. And some guy who just looks completely ordinary, he could be a great devotee. You don't know. So I would, I would offer respect to everyone because in the Holy Dham, everyone's a devotee. Even the, the cats and dogs and the pigs and birds and everybody is a devotee. They may be in an offensive state, or they may be in a fallen state, but in Vrindavan, everybody. So anyway, that was my attitude. And then uh, there is a wall along the south side of the Kun. And in that wall, there's a door. So I was walking along, I was chanting Japa, I think. I was chanting 64 rounds a day. And, uh, the door opened and the man came out and he said, I am Krishna Das Babaji, I'm your spiritual master's god brother. Would you like to stay with us, have prasadam? Mm -hmm. you know? So in the, inside this door, in this plain wall, you know, like just any wall everywhere in India, you know, some just some old funky door. Inside there's this beautiful little temple uh, with this really wonderful Krishna deity like this. Mm. Yeah. Krishna smile, his big smile, <laughs> and he's in Sri Bhanga form and like that. And there's all these devotees, and I wound up staying with them for two weeks. Mm. Yeah, and just chanting 64 rounds a day, taking prasad, hearing the classes. The classes were in Hindi. I didn't understand a word of it. <laughs> Maybe one or two words, <laughs> mm. but you know, Krishna and Ram. Mm. 
<laughs> but uh, anyway, I stayed with them. And they were wonderful because they were on Raganuga Bhakti platform. And everything they were doing was on spontaneous platform. And this is really where I got my taste for Raganuga Bhakti. Up until that time, I didn't understand. I was reading the books, you know. Like there's this amazing shloka in the beginning of Chaitanya Charitamrita where Krishna is contemplating his appearance as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And Krishna quotes this shloka, which is from some Purana, that um, love, which is limited by the regulative principles of the scriptures, does not satisfy me. It can lead the worshiper even to liberation, but what really makes me